Mr. Han. This is Maslayer, and in this video, I'm going to explain to you the concept on trivial graph. This topic, it is very examinable under mathematics paper one, and it mostly comes as the last question, question 23. So what are you supposed to know about trivial graph? First, let's understand the definition. So a trivial graph is a line graph that gives a picture of how an object moves. For example, if an object moves from point A to point B, the question is, are we able to come up with the picture of how the object has moved? So if we're able to come up with a picture of how the object has moved using a line, that is what we're referring to as a trivial graph. So we have three mostly common types of trivial graph. We have one, the distance time graph, secondly, velocity time graph, and lastly, acceleration time graph. However, the most examinable one is velocity time graph. So what are you supposed to know about the velocity time graph? For example, I've got this diagram here. So this is the velocity time graph. Okay, so how are I going to that this is the velocity time graph? Very simple. On the vertical axis, which is the y-axis, you are always going to be given velocity, which is meter per second. And then the horizontal axis, which is the x-axis, will be given time. So we have the movement of this object from point A, B, C, and D. After explaining how you can know that this is a velocity time graph, now what calculations are involved under trivial graph? The first calculation that you need to know is how to calculate speed. Secondly, how to calculate acceleration or retardation. And lastly, the displacement or the distance covered by the object. So with the speed, we have the speed formula. So speed is, is always equal to distance over time. Very important to know. Speed is always equal to distance over time. Okay? And I also want to stress to you to say velocity and speed, they are the same. The way you calculate is similar. The only difference between speed and velocity is that velocity is a vector quantity or speed is a scalar quantity. Let's go to the acceleration. Acceleration with a symbol n is given by v minus u over t. This v stands for the final velocity. u is a initial velocity or the starting velocity. t is a time taken. As you are enjoying the calculation of acceleration under travel graph, you may find that you are having a negative acceleration. That negative acceleration is called retardation. Therefore, retardation is the negative acceleration. As simple as that. Distance or displacement. Distance and displacement means one and the same thing. The only difference is that displacement is a vector quantity. There is a direction which is involved in displacement, while distance is a vector quantity. But the way you enjoy the calculation of displacement or distance is purely the same. How are you supposed to calculate the displacement or distance using the velocity time graph? So we are saying the displacement is the area under the graph. So meaning that for you to calculate the distance covered by an object or the displacement covered by an object, you need just to calculate the area under the graph. Remember that initially I explained to say a trivial graph, it is a line graph that gives us a picture of how an object has moved. So as we draw that line graph, there is an area which is being formed under or beneath the line. Therefore, I'm going to show you the different shapes that are formed under the trivial graph or under the line graph of a velocity time graph. So the first shape that we need to know, it is a right angle triangle. A right angle triangle is mostly formed under a trivial graph. So if you have this shape, the area, the formula for the area that you are supposed to use is this, which is area is equal to half bh. Half, it is the base. H, it is the height. Apart from the triangle, we have a rectangle. A rectangle is one of the shapes which is being formed under the trivial graph. So the formula for the area of a rectangle, it is area is equal to L times B. This is L, this is B. The other shape that we need to appreciate, it is a trapezium. A trapezium can be in this form or in this form. However, the most important thing that you need to appreciate 
as you are calculating the area under trapezium is how you can identify the value of A, B, and H. Now, you need to know that the value of A and B, or the length A and B, are always parallel to each other. This is the most cardinal thing that you need to know. To say line A and line B are always parallel to each other. However, line B is longer than line A. The reason why I'm saying this is because you may be you may find that you have a flipped trapezium. So you need to know how to identify the value of A or the length of A and the length of B. Of which I've said to say the length A and B are always parallel to, to each other. Parallel lines, these are lines that never meet. So they are always parallel to each other. However, line B is longer than line A. So we have called these two trapezia. As you can see, this A and B are parallel to each other. Line B is longer than A. And then the difference between A and B, it is the height, which is the H. So the difference in length between A and B, it is H. So even here, as you can see, A and B, they are parallel to each other. The difference in length between A and B is H. The formula that you can use to calculate the area of a trapezium is area is equal to half, open bracket, A plus B, close bracket, H. So this is the formula that you are supposed to employ when you are calculating the area of a trapezium. So as you can see initially, I've explained about a velocity time graph. I've explained, I've given you an example of a velocity time graph, which is this graph here, because we have meters per second and we have time. So this is a trivial graph. In this trivial graph, there is an area which is formed. We have different areas that are being formed. For example, I can name the first area to be 1, 2, and then the last one to be 3. As you can see, the first area is a rectangle triangle. Therefore, to calculate the distance from point A to point B, or to calculate the displacement covered from point A to point B, you use this formula. Plus, from here up to here, we need to calculate the area under this line, which is a rectangle. We use that formula. And then lastly, we come to, to shape 3. Shape 3, it is also a rectangle triangle. Therefore, we use that formula. If you don't want to divide the area under this graph in this way, what you're supposed to do is we can do this. We can erase this part, meaning that we have for two areas. We have area one and area two. Area one is still a rectangle triangle with that formula. Area two is a trapezium, which is this, meaning that we need to use this formula. If you don't want to divide it in this way, there is another option. Okay, remember in mathematics we normally say there are different ways of killing a lot. There are different ways of enjoying the calculation, but the answer remains the same. We can erase the subdivision under the subdivision of the area under this curve. Okay, so as you can see, the whole lot of this shape it is a trapezium because we have got two parallel lines, okay, and B is always longer than A. So mean that this is A. This is B. The difference in length between A and B is what we are referring to as a height. So this is also a trapezium, meaning that we are talking about this shape there. So we can use the same formula to calculate the area. So what you need to know is, as you are calculating the area, you are actually calculating the displacement or the distance. Very simple calculation there that you need to enjoy as far as struggle graph is concerned. Hope this video has given you a prerequisite knowledge on the calculation under the travel graph, which is always the last question under mathematics paper one final exam. See you on Saturday as we will be having a live interaction by solving one or two exam questions as examples. See you there. Mr. Matsilea, Mr. Matsilea. Mr. Matsilea, oh, oh, Mr. Matsilea, Mr. Matsilea, Mr. Matsilea, Mr. Matsilea, oh, oh, Mr. Matsilea.